Good morning, welcome back to another video and today we are going to be going over five ways people are making millions in Shadowlands. Now just stick around and enjoy the video. Okay, so five ways people are making millions in Shadowlands. This video will be summarizing all of the best potential ways for you to actually make a lot of gold in a short amount of time and how people are performing and making a hell of a lot of gold at this moment in time within Shadowlands in regards to gold making and or gold farming as well. So aside from all of that, let's just jump into number one, which is meat map farming. And when I call that is basically any of the cooking materials. So meats are meats are actually selling quite well at this moment in time as these farms are picking up in popularity when it comes towards Shadowlands for cooking. And that is mainly due to the fact of the demand for cooked materials in order to actually use in raid nights. This means that at the moment the meats for the mats, the mats for the meats or whatever you want to call it, are actually selling for a hell of a lot of gold at this moment in time and that makes these farms to be quite profitable. Person of note that's actually producing a lot of content in regards to this is Student. Student has actually produced a, quite a few videos about this and we're doing the t different types of meat farms in order to maximize the amount of gold through cooking and you can actually farm up all of these materials and then cook them into their base materials and then sell those onto the auction house after you've cooked with them. You can sell the mats flat on the auction house for a tidy profit as well. Aside from all of that, this is doing very well in the grand scheme of things as cooked materials for cooking, obviously, um, are going to be in a very high demand as raids progress and dungeons and PvP actually goes about, it's going to work out really well in the grand scheme of things. I'm finding this to be a very good way in order to make gold at this moment in time and highly recommend checking out these types of farms as they're so profitable at this moment in time, it is beyond a joke. Uh, other than that, let's move into number two, which is crafted legendaries. Now crafted legendaries can come from dual crafting, like leatherworking, tailoring, and all that jazz. So these ones are the crafted legendary little gears. Now they haven't actually been cut, turned into legendaries yet, but this is like the base thing that you would want in order to craft your legendary. This can be a range of different types of eye levels, and predominantly the rank ones are actually the, one of the fastest selling ones at the moment in time. And that's because they're most likely the cheapest, but they are very profitable to actually craft. Now, overall, these are doing quite well and most people are actually making a hefty amount of gold by crafting these legendaries. The barrier to entry, however, is you need to be max level in order to craft them on that particular tune. So you need to level up your tunes in order to actually start crafting these legendaries. This is how we're actually going to be getting the jump on it and Thus, that is why I'm focusing heavily onto my leveling at the moment while doing my standardized daily routine in order to make gold. This is so we can actually produce a hefty amount of gold and keep leveling our professions as well as that. Then we can have a strong production coming along and then we can actually start crafting those legendaries, crafting those legendaries. Overall, this is producing a stupid amount of gold and at the moment, and if you have the ability to do so, then do so. Aside from that, if you don't, then I'd start leveling up your characters immediately as that is working out quite well in the grand scheme of things. The thing of note that I would say is the most profitable one for the crafted legendaries is the blacksmithing. So that is something you may want to consider leveling up first before any of the others. Aside from all of that, let's move into number three, which is BOE farming. Now, BOE farming is still going to be profitable for a very long while, especially until like 9.1. Okay, so I would highly recommend start farming these up because it's very little work. Almost anyone can farm this up, preferably a boomkin or a druid in the grand scheme of things, as that would typically get you the best results um, for killing mass amounts of mobs but you can also be a monk at the exact same time and not have that much of a problem. Other different types of classes are usually welcome, but just be prepared that some people may not just want any old class jumping in on that. Aside from that, BOE farming, however, 
However, BOE farming is an RNG based farming style and you aren't always guaranteed that BOE item at the end of that hour's worth of farming. You're gonna need to do consecutive hours to get multiple BOEs. So that is something you're gonna have to do right there. Alongside that, you do get a load of mats to go along with that. So it isn't a complete bust and you can always make a stupid amount of gold when it comes towards your BOE farming. You can also fuse this BOE farming with a meat map farm as they come from mobs as well and then you can generate a decent amount of gold as well as selling the meat mats or cooking them and also farming up those BOEs. You can make stupid amounts of gold at the beginning of an expansion and following up to the, the point one of that expansion. So, that being the case, this is something that I would highly double down on if you're not keen on profession style gathering and all that stuff, you just want to do standardised farming. So, that being the case, that's doing incredibly well and is making people stupid amounts of gold at this moment in time. Now let's get on to number four, which is map flips. What I mean by map flips is by milling, prospecting and disenchanting. These come from their relative professions which is inscription, dual crafting and enchanting. These can be done by just getting a hold of the materials like laced right ore, prospecting that for the gems and selling those flat on the auction house. Other things you can do is by is by crafting the cuffs with tailoring and then disenchanting those with, with enchanting in order to reduce the cost of different types of enchants as well to actually maximize amounts of gold or selling the mats flat on the auction house for a tidy profit. The other ones of note that actually are doing quite well at this moment in time is milling and that is for milling death blossom in order to produce you a load of the different types of inks and or pigments in order to actually sell on the auction house. You can use this also in conjunction with crafting like missives and contracts in order to maximize the amount of gold you're actually getting. Aside from all of that, this is doing incredibly well at this moment in time and the one that I would highly focus on at the moment is the disenchanting version if you've got the time. If you don't have an awful lot of time, then prospecting or milling is your best bet in order to maximize your returns. Aside from all of that, those are actually calculatable inside Worth It for your server specifically. Just be careful on what pricing source you're actually using in your configuration for Worth It in regards to your flipping. So that is just something you may wanna consider moving forward. Aside from all of that, that's doing incredibly well at this moment in time, and highly recommend it if you don't have an awful lot of time to do mass amounts of farming, you can do that quite passively, and then you can make a decent chunk of gold moving forward. Aside from all of that, let's move into our last one at number five, which is Dark Moon Decks. Now, I've been banging on about Dark Moon Decks all week, and yeah, Dark Moon Decks are doing really well at this moment in time. The only thing, the only thing that is a massive barrier to entry is you're gonna need a hefty amount of capital. Now, Bregvids actually did a video on this saying that it's a 60-20 for Death Blossom and Nightshade, respectively. And that would be 60K in Death Blossom and 20K in Nightshade would equal in your production for crafting up those trinkets. You will need to actually scale this up as in order to actually craft your first initial amount of decks and then you can pump in another 80k, 80k, 80k. You can see how this will add up in the cost to get started and that is your barrier to entry. If you are not willing to invest that amount of gold into your Dark Moon decks, then I would suggest not doing this. But if you are, there can be stupid amounts of profit involved when actually doing this and overall this will generate you with a lot of gold in the long run. Aside from all of that, I find this to be a great way in order to make gold at this moment in time once you've done the initial cost and then you've got your float of gold that just circulates and starts producing gold income you're not going to have that much of a problem right there and overall this actually produces you with a lot of gold in the grand scheme of things just in general actually produces you with a lot of gold and as they are eye level 200 trinkets they're not going to stop the demand for those anytime soon 
Aside from all of that, they do have a high cost because of their eye level and the cost of the mats at the moment. As mats start to drop in price, and they usually will, this will mean that though that the trinkets will become less and less. So I'd start watching your market if you are going to be getting into this, because you're gonna to have to be a little bit smart about it when it does start to drop. Know when to get out of the market when you actually are going to start losing gold. Aside from all of that, guys, that is pretty much all I have to say for this video for today. These are the five ways people are making millions in in game at this moment in time and overall I find a lot of these farms to actually be quite good or crafts to be really good and overall I'd highly recommend doing some of those. Other than that guys that is pretty much all I have to say for today. Take it easy and I shall see you in the next video which will be tomorrow. If you want to support the channel and help make the channel even better then why not check out the Patreon. Members get additional info, gold making resources and Patreon specific content. The link is located in the description down below. Thank you and have an awesome day.